You are watching Linux Mint 13 XFCE Bootcamp. In today's show, I'm going to do something I've never done before. We are going to pimp the bash prompt. I'm going to do that right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Okay, as many of you know, I have uh, the tilde key that pulls down a nice drop-down terminal for me. And um, this way I have a terminal that is really easy for me to get to. Now, as far as I know, uh, Linux Mint XFCE does not have a hotkey assignment for uh, a terminal. But um, you can assign one if you want to. But for today's show, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to install Wake. And then we're going to really pimp it out. And the nice thing about these little tweaks are that you will be able to see these tweaks in just about any kind of terminal you open. So you don't have to install Wake. You can actually just use the regular terminal that you have here. And here it is. Now, before you shut off the video and that sort of thing, this is nothing to really be afraid of. It does take a little bit of getting used to. But the thing is, um, there are plenty of tutorials online that will take you through the process of using the terminal, and some of the commands are quite easy to do. Okay, first, to get the type of terminal that I have installed, that is a program called Quake. So, follow along with me. We're going to type in sudo, which is super user do, apt hyphen get install Quake and press enter. It'll ask you for your password and then press enter again. It's now reading the package list, it's building dependencies, and then it's going to let me know Quake is installed. And the easy way to find that out is going into your menu here and going into accessories and you will see Quake Terminal is here. Once this activates, you will get a pop-up notification that will let you know that it's running and the default key for it is F12. So let's go ahead and press the F12 key. And you will see that we now have a terminal here button. And it's using a pseudo transparency. I really don't care for that. So let's go ahead and right click on it and go into preferences. And then from here, under appearance, we can remove the transparency entirely. And then when we press F12 again, you will see now we have a dark background, and that's something we can work with. Eh, what fun is a terminal without wallpaper? So let's go ahead and select one. I'm going to go into Downloads here. I'm going to select this one and select to open it. All right, now, when we press the tilde key, oops, the F12 key I meant, you're going to see that we don't have it showing yet. But now... We can press the slider, and now we have a little bit of a texture there. Okay, I'm happy with that. You can select any other images that you find online or maybe in your photo collections. You can have any image that you want as the background of your terminal. I think I'll fly with this, but let me um, darken that up a little bit more because I do want a nice little dark kind of a brick-like appearance. Okay, I'm pleased with that. Okay, there's some other interesting things you can do. You can uh, have it show the scroll bar or not show, show the scroll bar. Um, general preferences. There are a number of things here. If you don't want a tray icon, you can hide it and you'll notice it disappeared. You can uh, disable those pop-up notifications at startup, but you can't have it prompt you when you decide to quit the program. Okay, you can always uh, have it stay on top. You can have it hide on losing focus. I have that disabled because, you know, um, I don't care for that. And I always hide the tab bar um, just to give it a nice, a nicer appearance. And I like that appearance a little bit better. Okay, 
You also have some keyboard shortcuts that you can assign to this. Uh, I toggled my quake visibility by uh, pressing this F12 here with my mouse and then selecting a different key. And I used the tilde key, like the quake game. But um, for this demonstration, I'm just going to leave it as is. And then, of course, some compatibility things. What they do, I don't know. All right, but those are the ins and out, the outs of the Quake. You can play with it if you wish and uh, see what kind of things you can do with it. Okay, at this point, now let's have some more fun. Uh, let's go ahead and open up Firefox web browser. And now we are going to install a program called Archie. Now, Archie is this little program that you'll see up here on my screen that shows uh, Linux Mint and it gives some uh, system uh, specific data. And uh, so we're going to have it, we're going to go ahead and install that package. And luckily, I have a little cheat sheet here that I can go ahead and pull. And this is that link. Right click copy and right click paste and go. Okay, and then we want to download this dev package, the Archie O. 28.deb. These links will be in the show notes, of course, so it'll be easy for you to find them. Okay, and then we're just going to go ahead and save the file. All right, the file is saved, and now we can uh, quickly navigate to our download and double-click on Archie028.deb. Now, once it's loaded everything up into GW Package Installer, we can go ahead and install the package. It also gives us some details about the package, included files in the package, that sort of thing. So just click install and let that go ahead and roll for you. Now we need a password. And now it's installing the packages and all of its dependencies. Once that has installed, we can press close. Once you see the reinstall package and remove package, um, buttons here, it's okay to go ahead and close this window. Now, let's test it and see if it works. So, pressing F12 to open up our terminal here, let's type in Archie. And as you can see, it's done the same thing that I have on my panel here. It's giving us the name of our host name, what Linux uh, version that we're running, the kernel, uh, how much time the uh, this has been up. Now, obviously, uh, that uptime is a little inaccurate there, uh, but it's giving us information on the system. Pretty neat, huh? Now, we're going to uh, change our prompt a little bit more and uh, do what I have here, where I've got these little squiggly lines that go across, and you know, I can issue a command like list, and it's going to show all of the contents in my uh, home directory right here. And uh, that, that comes in hand, handy if you're going to be navigating your file system uh, using uh, commands. And then we're going to pull up our next link. Okay, and this program that I used is called Bashish. Hey, that's Bashish, not Hashish, you tokem smokem crazies out there. Sorry, I had to do the boot camp uh, drill instructor voice, but uh, paste and go. And then, we need to click the link, the source in tar gazette format. So let's go ahead and click on this link, and we want the latest version, which is 224, made on March 15th, 2010. Ah, and interestingly enough, it looks like we have a dev package, so we don't have to compile it. Yeah. That should make it nice and easy for us. So let's go ahead and click this link and download it. Very small file as well. All right, so we'll save that file. Okay, now that we have all of our files downloaded, we can proceed to the next step. Let's go ahead and double click the Bashish installer. Not Hashish. Hehe. <laughs> we'll wait for this to load up. And then we will install that as well. And then we get to have some fun with the term. And password again. All right, and installation has finished. Okay, we can now go ahead and close this window. Now, let's press F12. We've got our bash prompt. 
but now, if we press 11, it's going to fill it the whole screen. And that's what we want for right now. F11 will also take that whole screen away. Pretty neat, huh? So, if you need to have Bash covering your screen, you have it right here. Okay, let's go ahead and issue the command for Bashish. Okay, and then this will enable a Bashish prompt and terminal feel theming. And uh, if you press Enter to enable, um, this will start the theming process or Control C to quit. So we're going to go ahead and press Enter. Okay, Bashish is now installed. Restart your terminal or log off and log on again to start theming your shell. Well, this is how you do that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and press uh, F11. We're going to right click and close tab on that. And then we can go ahead and then now you'll notice we have a completely new prompt here. Okay, and this is the prompt that it has given us. Now, we can type in Bashish list. And this will show you all of the themes that you can get for this. So, for instance, let's say all of you Star Trek fans want to make your bash prompt look like uh, the uh, computer screens in Star Trek. You can type in bashish Alcars. And now you have a bashish prompt that looks like the Star Trek terminal. And uh, basically, um, let's see, we've got a star date on here. Mm. Weird. <laughs> and you can list the contents of the directory that you're in. And it gives you that listing. That looks kind of cool. I'd never looked at this one before. Well, I saw some screenshots of it and that sort of thing. But maybe I want it to have a green color. So let's go ahead and type in Bashish. L cars green. Okay, it doesn't look like it really themed that for us. Um, let's um, I'll type in bashish and list again. Okay, and experimentation is key. You might want to go through and uh, play a play. Uh, with a number of these prompts to see which one you really like the most. I'm going to... Uh, which one did I want here? Blue Steel. Okay, so Bashish. Blue Steel. Green. Now you can see we have a prompt that looks just like the one that I have um, on my screen, or pretty similar to it. Now, how do we get Archie right on top of that to show every time? Let's go ahead and close the terminal by pressing F12. Now, in your home directory, mine's a spatry, uh, in your file manager, press Control H. And this shows you all of your hidden folders and files. Anything with a dot in front of the name is hidden. And the graphics, and you'll notice the graphics uh, show them as semi-transparent here as well. So that way you know that they are semi-transparent. Okay, now you have a um, file here called .bashrc. Right-click on that and select open with get it or whichever text editor you may have such as leaf pad mouse pad kate any text editor will do all right and then at the very bottom of this add archie and then file save let's minimize this i want to make sure that that worked so now let's press f12 and it'll take a moment to load the prompt. Aha! And there it is. Okay, and then we want this to show all of the information so we can drag that down a little bit. Okay, there you are. You've learned how to how to uh, pimp your bash prompt and that sort of thing. So, uh, pretty easy, huh? Wasn't too bad, wasn't too painful. 
Uh, lots of fun, fun, fun with the command line there. Okay, and now in my next episode, we're going to do some post-installation cleaning. So you'll definitely want to stick around for that one. Thank you.